God and for God's word. Pastor Franklin, the resident pastor of Kodesh Family Church Atlanta, comes your way with this refreshing and inspiring word that will motivate you to do your best for God. Join Pastor Franklin now as he ministers the word of God. series and it's probably a series we haven't done before in the church I mean from the pulpit but for the month of May I want to talk a bit about marriage amen, amen. and today I'm talking about the God type of marriage the God type of marriage Genesis 2 verse 18 to 25. Genesis 2, 18 to 25. The God type of marriage. says that, And the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Amen. Amen. There are different kinds of marriages. There is the movie-inspired marriage. (laughs) Where people believe the marriage would follow what they see in the movie. There is the, I call the retail marriage. Where the marriage is like a dress you buy. If you try it on it, it doesn't fit, you take it back. Or maybe initially... It was fitting, but you know, one or two happened. A little pounds here and there. So this man, this dress doesn't fit anymore. Then you take it back. There is also the culture-based marriage. It is based on our culture, wherever we come from. Americans have their own type of marriage. Ghanaians have their own type of marriage. Indians have a different type of marriage. And when two people from different groups meet, then it becomes a problem because there is a clash of ideas. There is also marriage that is based on what what you have learned from close relatives, like maybe your mother or your father or your uncles or aunties, things you have observed. So this is the way it should go. This is how a man, be- this is how a man behaves in the marriage. So that is what you are looking for. Or maybe the lady has observed the mother. So this is how my mother handled the home. So this is what needs to be done. Sometimes for both good and bad. You bring everything into the marriage. 
if the marriage didn't go well for your mother, it makes you prepositioned in a certain way. If it went good, you are also in a certain way. If your father, your father may have been an abuser, your mother just kept quiet. So you think that is the way to talk to your wife. You know, you will bring all these things into the marriage. And there is also the God type of marriage. The marriage that is based on God's principles, biblical principles, where things are decided based on what is in the Bible. And that is what we want to talk about. Amen. Amen. And the scripture we read, it's just a passage where we see God bringing Adam and Eve together. And there are a lot of things There are a lot of things we can learn from that passage. You know, the first characteristic of the God type of marriage that we see is one man, one woman. Proverbs, uh, no, Genesis um, 2, the 22, verse 22. And the rib which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto Adam, a woman. This has some implications for us. And I, I can see two. The first one is one man, one woman. God had the chance to make a partner for man. God could have made one, another man But God made a woman. So the God type of marriage is marriage between a man and a woman. Not a man and a man or a woman and a woman. And this is no hate speech. Everybody has a right to believe what they want to believe. We believe in the Bible. The Bible is our reference. So in a church, we have to refer to the Bible. And 1 Timothy 3.15 says that the church is the ground and the pillar of truth. So maybe you've gone everywhere. Nobody really said anything. Everybody said it is okay. When you come into the church, we are supposed to speak what is the truth according to the Bible. The church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. And in the Bible, God made a woman for the man, not a man for the man. Or God could have made a man for the man and another woman, two women, to also be there. Amen. Amen. So God type of marriage is between a man and a woman. And we have to be firm and talk about it unashamedly. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 to 10. First Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. Says that, give me uh, NLT. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or worship idols who commit adultery, or are male prostitutes, or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or abusive, or cheat people, none of these will enter into the kingdom of God. Many sins have been listed. If you die in those sins, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. I didn't write the Bible. One of them is homosexuality, and we need to talk about it. The world has their own opinion, but this place is the church. And what we talk about is based on the Bible. It is between a man and a woman. So, especially the young people, you'll be going to college, taking courses. Don't let any professor or lecturer fool you that it is okay, not according to the Bible. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Two men may be able to live together. Two women may be able to live together. But it doesn't mean 
that is the right thing. I mean, last time I went to Olive Garden and I ordered chicken shrimp carbonara. And they brought me a spoon. I was able to eat. I could use the spoon to cut the spaghetti and scoop it into. But if they had brought me a, a fork, I mean, there was a fork, but they also brought a spoon. If I had used a fork, it would have been easier to eat. But because they brought their spoon, I said, oh, if the Italians say you eat it with spoon, let me eat it with spoon. And it wasn't as nice as using the fork. Amen. So you may have two men living together. It doesn't mean it is the right thing. According to the Bible, God made a woman for the man. It's very simple. Amen. The other implication of the scripture is that a man just needs one woman and a woman needs one man. You don't need two women. And the woman doesn't need two men. You don't need the wife and the side chick. Or you don't need a husband and a side what? Side what? Do. Dude. Amen. One man, one woman. So when God made a package and called it a woman, that package to a man is like water to a thirsty man. You can drink it from different cups. But at the end of the day, the only thing you are drinking is water. You could go and buy a golden cup, silver cup, one that is shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle, convince yourself you are drinking Coca-Cola, but it is water that is inside. So, you may change the vessel, but at the end of the day, it is water. That's what the Bible says, that drink from your own systems. So, there is no point in changing the vessel because all you are getting is water anyway. Amen. A man needs only one woman and a woman needs one man. There's a popular scripture we all know. Say that the bishop must be a husband of what? One wife. That scripture, it means that if you take the population of women, there are the types that are called wives and uh, wives, and there are the types that are not wives. I'm coming. Just follow me. <laughs> the bishop must be a husband of one wife. So go out there and choose and pick for yourself one wife. So you go to Walmart and I say, bring me one bottle of uh, orange juice. It doesn't mean that is the only orange juice that is there or the only bottle with juice that is in Walmart. There may be cranberry juice, there may be mango juice, but I want one bottle of orange juice. So there will be other types, but even amongst the type that have orange juice, I just want you to bring me one. That's why I'm saying that there are others that may not be orange juice. There are some that are not wives. And if you are a young man and you are not married, and you are choosing, you have to choose someone that can be a wife. Amen. Amen. And a man also needs to understand that, look, there, there are others that could be wives. You could easily marry any of them and they will be your wife. But all you need is just one. Amen. Amen. So one man, one wife. That is the biblical principle. But the world says you need a side, a side chick or a side dude. It is not true. Amen. Amen. One woman will be able to satisfy you all the days of your life. Because it is water. Look, at the base of it, at the base of it, when the man is ejaculating, it feels the same whether she's fair, she's tall, she's slim, she's, it's the same. 
It's not like when the person is fair, the thing is different. It is the same. When the person is fat, it is the same. So a lot of it is just how you process things. That what you say, oh, oh, I need to change my vessel. You can change the vessel, but I get the same thing. Amen. The same water. Water is always H2O. You can't you can change it. Even if it is sparkling water, at the base of it, it is water. Maybe sparkling water is just the exotic one you find. You say, oh, this one looks exotic. Pierced and different things. Sparkling or something that makes the water look different. But it is water. You understand the point that I'm making? <laughs> Amen. In that same scripture, we see two people being mentioned. Turn up today to be a quicker message. We'll be having it the whole month, so we'll continue. We see two people being mentioned. <coughs> One is Adam, Genesis 2.18. So, and the Lord said, it is not good for the man. But we know that that man he was talking about was Adam. So it's not good for the man to be alone. Or it is not good that the man should be alone. But the question is, what type of man? Who was Adam? Because I believe it is good for some type of men to be alone. One, Adam had a place to stay. He had his own, he, he, his residence was the garden. It was solved. A man that is ready to marry must have a place to stay. Or a means to demonstrate that I can, I have, I can take care of the family. If you marry me, we would have a place to stay. If he's still living with his parents and he proposes don't marry. If he's still living with the parents, no. No, okay. So he's living with the parents, saving the money. But then he must be able to demonstrate that I have the capacity to rent. Not that when we marry, can we stay with my mother for a little while we save. No. When you are ready to propose, you should be ready to, to, to rent a place. Amen. Amen. And all the boys here, the day you want to propose, you find a girl, make sure you, you have the capacity to, to, to rent. Maybe you may not have your own house, but you have the means to rent your own apartment. There is nothing more shameless than a man who has married and you don't have a place to stay and you are expecting the lady to come and stay with your mother in the same house. And you know, two women in the same house. The mother thinks, this is my house. This is how things should be done. And the new wife was, this is also my house within the house. And this is how things should be done. There is going to be a problem. Amen. So Adam had, he had a place to stay. You know, when a man doesn't have a place to stay on his own, it is better that he is alone. When he gets a place to stay, he can take care of his loneliness problem. Amen. Adam also had a job. His work was to till the garden. A man should have a means to earn a living to take care of the family. Today in our world, women work, they bring in money. It's a blessing. If you're a man and your wife also makes money, you should see it as a blessing, not an entitlement. <laughs> it's, it's a blessing, not an entitlement. 
your mindset should be that even if my wife should stop working, I earn enough to take care of the family. But if she works and brings something in, it's a blessing which allows us to do more. But note that you've made your calculations to your wife's salary. <laughs> you've calculated everything to the, to, the, to the penny, to the wife's salary. Look, if she, if she, no, if she earns, it's a blessing. We are happy. I, I don't think there's a man here who, if he has the opportunity, based on the era we are living in, and the wife can earn more, you say she didn't earn. It's a blessing. It helps every family. But it shouldn't be that that is all you are counting on. You yourself should work hard enough to be able to take care of the family. Adam had his rest, he had a job. He had something that he was doing. When God says it is not good for the man to be alone, that man is a man who had a responsible job. If the man cannot hold down a job, and he wants to marry you, run. <laughs> or tell him, just hold the job for six months. Let me see. Then I'll make, him, I'll make up my mind. Because he, he may be counting on your salary. Or he has seen that you're a nurse. So if I marry this nurse, my life will be set. I can sleep more. A little folding of the hands. A man should demonstrate that he has the means to, to take care of the family. Adam had a job. Your wife's salary is a blessing, not an entitlement. Amen. Today, the men probably will not like me, but. So we are talking about Adam. What was the first thing about Adam? He had a residence. He had a job. Okay, number three. Adam also had a relationship with God. How did Adam know that God wanted him to name the animals? He, he, he talked to God. He knew when God was talking to him. He had a relationship. In Genesis 3, the Bible says that, and they had the Lord God in the garden. And they hid. That means that they knew when God was there. They probably knew the time God comes. So the morning they didn't hide. But they knew in the afternoon they have to hide. So Adam had a relationship with God. A man that does not have a relationship with God. It's probably better that he stays alone. I won't give my daughter to a man like that. Because most men are strong when it comes to you are the head. Financially, you are the head. You are the authority. If I say something, you cannot say. You are also the spiritual head. You cannot pray for one hour and you want someone to entrust their daughter to you. It's not going to work. A man must be the head, you lead your family to God. Your children are watching you. Your children are watching you, how you pray in the house. If they grow up for the first 12 years of their life and they don't see you praying, chances are that they will not also be strong Christians. They've never seen you pray. They've never seen you say, I'm going to pray. Don't disturb me. I'm praying. I'm reading the Bible. All you do in the house is, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. You can't talk to me like that. What about spiritual headship? You must also be the man when it comes to leading your family to God. Adam knew God's voice. He knew when God was telling him to do something. He said, name the animals. He names them. He said, Adam, I've brought you a woman. I mean, how did he know that God was the woman that God brought is for him? He probably talked to God. So Adam, the man that God said, it is not good for him to be alone, 
had a relationship with God. A man must have a relationship with God. A, a husband must have a relationship with God. Otherwise, you are not ready to marry. I'm not saying that is how the world does it. I'm not saying there aren't people or couples in the world who are even atheists who seem to be having a good marriage. But if you believe in God, then our reference is the Bible. And based on what we see about Adam, the man that it is no good to be alone, he had a relationship with God. How is your relationship with God? Before you seek a relationship with the lady, have a relationship with God. Because if you choose the wrong lady too, it's, it's for life. Amen. Marriage, when we enter, we are entering for life. So it is good that you can also choose well. And when the lady has come, you can lead your family to God. Amen. Our children are will be growing up in a world where the lines between right and wrong have been bled. How are they going to make the right decision? You, the man, must lead your family to God. Amen. Amen. So, wives, if you, are, if you know your husband doesn't have a relationship with God, he doesn't pray in the house, you should be telling him, send him a text or WhatsApp. Have you heard what pastor is saying? If you touch him, you say you are disgracing me. Just send the WhatsApp. <laughs> You'll be able to get it. And if you are home and your husband is here too, or you are here, your husband, <laughs> whatever the case, send them a WhatsApp. Amen. Number four, Adam was obedient and yielded to God. Many don't realize it, because, but Adam was someone who, he just did whatever God wanted him to do. God took him and put him in the garden. He said, okay, no problem. They said, name the animals. No problem. Take care of the plants. No problem. Adam was somebody who yields to God. Someone who defers to God. So if you marry a man who is not yielded to God, he's a God unto himself. And when there's a problem, nobody can counsel him. Because he doesn't listen to anyone. No pastor, he doesn't even listen to God. How can a pastor speak to him? So make sure you are marrying someone who is yielded to God. Someone who believes in the word of God. Amen. Adam was not just someone that God says, oh, it's no good for him to be alone. No, he was a particular type of person. And all men must desire to be, at least have these basic minimums in your life. You have a place to stay. You have a responsible work you are doing. You are yielded to God. You have a relationship with God. It's very important. You must know how to pray. How are you going to lead your family? Amen. Amen. Now, the other person in the scripture is Eve. God also brought Eve. And Eve was also a type of woman. And all wives must also desire to be like Eve. One characteristic about Eve is that he, Eve was made to be a health meat. The Bible says it's clear. If you can show me that scripture, the Genesis 2, even verse 18, I think it mentions health meat. It said, I will make him and health meat for him. And health meat for him. Not and health meat for her. Eve was made to be and health meat for the man. What does help meet means? It means a fitting help. A suitable help. Help that is customized for that person. Not just any type of help. It means that Eve is coming to help the man. So what the man needs help in, Eve is going to do. How is Eve going to know that this is how the man wants to be helped? The man has to tell him that this is how I want you to help me. 
Because God brought Eve to the man. And she's supposed to be a help meet. So Adam has to explain, oh, okay, I need help. I think this one's I got it under control. Can you help me with this one? That is the purpose. In the God type of marriage, the wife understands that aside everything, you see, the, the woman should pursue all her dreams, become who she wants to be, doctorate, vice president, vice pre- president, whatever you want to be. But the principal reason was to be a helpmate. You could be anything you want to be, but when it comes to the house, help your man. Help your man by promoting him, encouraging him. You should be your husband's number one fan. Uh, what, 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 what else would help me to mean? What are you going to do to help the man? Support him. Cheer him up. Man is wired in such a way that he needs to provide. He needs to be seen as strong. But sometimes the world beats them. They won't tell you. It's not easy. They won't tell you. I'm not a man. I'm talking about them. They won't tell you. The world is beating them. Things are crashing them. And a man can easily become crushed. But the woman who understands the purpose helps the man to stand up again, encouraging him. You can do it. Encourage the man. Be the help meet. A help is not the Lord. These days when women marry, they are expecting to be lords and queens. But we haven't built a kingdom yet. Queen of what? There is no kingdom. So be, being the help doesn't demote you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was called the helper. The same description given to the Holy Spirit is the same description given to the woman in the marriage. So if the Holy Spirit does not feel demoted, you shouldn't feel demoted that God made you to be a helper. If you understand your purpose and the reason for which you are made, you will not overreach. And that is what causes a lot of problems. Because men have egos, whether you like it or not. A man is wired to have an ego. And no man is going to be there for you to stand on his neck. But if you know your purpose, you will even sit on the head. He won't realize you are sitting on the head. Because you know how to manage the person, how to, 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 to push the man. Oh, I hope you are understanding my preaching. The woman is the help meet, a suitable help. So you could take a, 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 a peg that has four sides. And if the diameter of a circle is similar to the, the, the width of one of the sides, and you, you are strong enough, you can push it still inside the circular hole. It doesn't mean that is the correct tool. So when it is a fitting help, it's someone who is supporting the person. Look, think about it this way. If God says the man needs help, The men really have a problem. That is why God is bringing you in. Help is for people who have problems. Help is not given to people who don't have problems. And God made the man and looked at the man. And said, I, 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 need, I need to give him help. And you are the help that God has made. It is a very privileged position. But when you don't understand it, it will become a problem. There is no woman or no wife who would allow her housemate or the cook to start dictating in her house, even though the cook cooks better than her. Because you came in to help. I employed you to cook. 
How can you come and be? In the same way, if you are the help in the family, don't try to become the head of the family. There are different types of men. There is a man who would say, look, I think my wife does this better than me. So just take it and run. All you need to do is to defer to me sometimes. Oh, I'm considering these options. Which one do you, which one do you think I should do? I say, oh, I think maybe this one. Then we agree and move on. But you are running the show. It doesn't mean you are the head. It's a man who has seen the qualities in you and decided that, tell it, just go ahead and do, do the stuff. Yeah. In my house, at the, when it comes to money, my wife is my CEO. I said, look, can the cabinet give me a hundred dollars to solve some issues? Amen. Amen. From budgeting to everything to whatever we are saving, she's, she's processing it. It doesn't mean I'm not the, help, the head. And sometimes men to be, be relaxed in your skin. It's not every time you have to prove that you are the head. There are situations where, yes, of course, it must show that you are the head. But a woman is not dumb. Some women are smarter than men. I mean, didn't you realize in your class there was a lady ahead of you when they did the exams? Look, there was a lady in my class, uh, Dinah Santi. Hey! However you do it, she's first or second. Then there was this, this lady, Lena Dipa. As for math, the everybody gave it to her. She's always first. So she's not a stupid person. So if a certain man marries her and wants to treat her like you cannot think, it's also going to cause a problem. Allow the women to, to live. Allow them to develop and become who they can become. But it doesn't mean you are not the head. And the woman also needs to understand that, look, even though I'm the CEO of GM, when it comes to the house, I am the help. So you don't bring the where you command people at GM to the house and you start commanding your husband. Because maybe you are used to commanding everybody. All the people you command in the work are men. So when you get home, you forget that this man is not the type in your office. <laughs> you in the house, you are the help meet. Amen. Amen. It is not a demotion. It is a powerful thing. Amen. Amen. Because he had the same description as the Holy Spirit. Give me John 14, 26 in the NLT. Then you can see that the Holy Spirit has been described as the helper. The uh, NLT. Sorry, New King James. New King James Version. See, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. So the Holy Spirit is, is the helper. Amen. Be a good helper. Be a suitable helper. Cheer your man on. They need a lot of help. That's why God says, I'm bringing help. God could have brought in something else. But I said, help. This one needs help. So cheer him up. He needs the help. Amen. Amen. Um, another thing we can learn from the scripture there. Genesis 2.24. Genesis 
So therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. Amen. So this, this, this column here, column here, what it means is everything that has been said here, I mean, this is, this is it. This is the result. They shall become one flesh. Most married people are not cleaved in all areas. Most have not become one in areas, some areas. Many married people have cleaved when it comes to sex. But when it comes to money, they are separate. They are individuals. Manage your money. Let me manage my money. How can you become one and still be different? It is not possible. But because of our selfishness, when it comes to money, that one we want to be separate people. But when it comes to other things, then we want to cleave together. The couple must cleave in terms of physical location. Like, if you are married, you should live in the same place. Ideally, sometimes people have to travel, it's okay. But ideally, if you are married, you should all be living in the same place. It's not like you live in Gwinnett, I live in Ostel. And we are married. It, 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 it's not going to work. It's not a God type of marriage. Adam and Eve were both in the garden. If you are in the same house, you should sleep in the same bedroom. When the marriage started, we were all sleeping in the same bedroom. Now you sleep in the guest bedroom. It's not a God type of marriage. You have a type of marriage, but it is not a God type of marriage. You should cleave when it comes to money. You share everything. You share saliva. You share bacteria. When it comes to money, you want to behave as if you are separate. It, it's not possible. If there is a disease from the other person, you would have gotten it by now. Because you share everything. If, if caca, <laughs> cavities, can be transferred by saliva, you, if the person has some, you would have some. Gengivitis, all those things. But when it comes to money, then you want to be able to see if you are, you are not separate. The goal is for the two to become one. The two becomes one. The money becomes one. We all work, but it is our money. It is not your money and his money or her money. It is our money. And it's one thing that is destroying families. And destroying marriages. Because people are selfish. We work, we bring everything together because we are one. So that also means that we are all Christians. I mean, there's a reason why people are like that. Don't get me wrong. You know, some people have had some experiences and stuff. I understand. But I'm here to teach the word of God. The two should become one. And if we are really becoming one, we can not only become one in certain areas, but when it comes to other areas, we, we are separate. No, it, it's, not, it's not possible. The original intent for God is for both of us to become one. I make $30,000 a year. You make $30,000 a year. We have $60,000 a year. And we use it to run the house. So when I said that the wife's money is a blessing, not an entitlement, I'm not saying the wife should keep the money. No, I'm not saying she should keep the money. If we make the money, we all bring the money together and we use it. But I'm just telling the man that in case the wife is not able to work, you should be responsible enough to take care of the family. So 
So I don't go and say, Pastor says my money, my money is is not. No. We all work, but the money belongs to us. You see, let me tell you a story. There is the 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 there's a couple in the church. They've been married for some time. One of their children had a medical condition which meant for a long time needed constant medical treatment and the wife had to take off to take care of the child if the money belongs to separate people when she's not working who is going to give her money monthly I mean she was working something happens now she cannot work and she has to take care of the child. And you say, oh, your money, my money. Now you are not working. You, you, you didn't want to bring the money together. Now you are not working. How are you going to get money monthly? Is it now that I have to start giving you money? And in life, life is like a ball. It keeps rolling. Today you may be any more than me. But tomorrow I may be any more than you. So, if because you are earning more today, you behave in a certain way, when things change, it will be difficult for you to, to expect me to also behave in a different way. But when we share everything, it doesn't matter if something has happened to one and the person is not able to work. Because we share the money already. The money belongs to us. Your money belongs to me. My money belongs to you. Amen. And there is peace and a, there, there, there is understanding in the use of the money. Sometimes the reason why women are hesitant to put in everything on the table is because of the wickedness of the men. Say, I'm the head. And someone who has been to school and is working and making money because the Bible says you are the head you take all the money the person cannot even send money to her parents if they want to buy something they have to come and ask you but they are working how? I mean it is not right you didn't pay her school fees her parents took care of her. She's gotten to a place where she can work. Her parents has been with her for all the days of her life. You just married her for the last five or seven years. And because you married her, now if her, if, if her mother needs $100 and she wants to send it to her mother, it is a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. Because she was taking care of her mother before she met you. Now she has met you, she cannot take care of her mother. It, it is a problem. That is why the women will not want to bring their money. Because of your wickedness. Oh, you don't understand? Oh, you don't like my message? It's not right. No, a, a Christian man will not, should not do that. That because Bible made you the head, you control everything. How is the person going to take care of the sick mother? The remote control is what? They control the remote. <laughs> what you watch on TV is even controlled. I mean, how? If the person didn't marry you, they will have their own TV. And because they have married you, look, allow the person to live if you allow your spouse to live you'll be happier in the same way when a woman is more blessed in the terms that you are more business minded you are more savvy you have better potential to make or earn more it doesn't mean that you misbehave in the house. I may be any 70,000, 
You may be a nurse. You are earning 280000 But I tell you, your money is my money. The money belongs to all of us. It belongs to all of us. And it is not only men who are wicked. Look, there are some women who are so wicked. If you put them next to the devil, it will be difficult to choose. No, you, you, you let me land. You are making more money than the man. And you are refusing to bring the money into the family. And everything the man makes is being used to pay rent, pay car, pay everything. At the end of the day, the man doesn't have any money. And you keep yours to yourself because somebody has told you that a woman there, you must not let the man see how much you make. Yeah. You, you, you are sending money to your family members to build houses for you. And the man that you are married to has become like a slave. Because he has to provide for the house. Everything that he is earning is being used to pay for things. And if the money is not even enough, you are complaining. But you make money and you pocket the money. It's wickedness. That's why I said when they put them to the devil, you make the difference. The money belongs to us. Bible says that they shall become one flesh. We cannot become one if we are not one when it comes to money. It shouldn't be that the time we are one is only when it is in the evening. Let's say, Adjua, bra. Come, come to the bedroom. That's not the only time where we become one. We should be one in every area. It, it takes trust. When you build trust, when you sow trust as a seed, your marriage will be better. That I haven't kept the money. This is how much I earn. This is how much you earn. These are our responsibilities. What do you need to do? You need to do this. Look. When, 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 when my wife came initially, she couldn't work because I was in school. I didn't have green card. I was the only person working. Then, when she was able to start working, as I was in Georgia, he got to a point she was any more than me. And then it has changed again by the grace of God. I'm also any higher. So if if we had this principle of your money, my money, you know, what I did, to, what I would have done to her when she wasn't any money, she would have done worse when she was any more than me. And me to know that if we have any more, then my gangalia will come. <laughs> Look, but we don't have issues. Sometimes you say, oh, I need to send money to this person. I say, increase it. But it's not like, don't send. Why shouldn't she send? If she didn't marry you, she will send money to the person. And because the person has married you, you sit on the money. I'm the man. I'm the man. But may God help us. Amen. May we build better families, better homes. Amen. And look, decide to be fair. Be fair to your spouse. If you make money, let everybody enjoy. Don't keep your money. Look, the world, God can surprise you. The Things can change in a moment. And you realize that whilst you used to be up, you are now down. And you would expect the person to also be kind to you. Bible says that do unto others what you would want them what? To do unto you. I hope you are blessed. We will continue next week. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time we have shared in your house.
bless the word that was shared. Give us light. Give us understanding. May we be able to build strong, happy homes in the mighty name of Jesus. May marriages here or on Zoom or anywhere they find a message that are rocky, suffering because of issues that have been addressed here, Lord. May you give them more wisdom to understand and know what to do. We thank you. And if you are here, you've never given your life to Jesus. Jesus is the real thing. Or you're on Zoom, you've never given your life to Jesus. I want to give you the opportunity to be saved. It first starts by being saved. And then you can go on to live a fruitful life in Christ Jesus. And we are going to say a, a prayer. If you genuinely want to give your life to Jesus, say it with all your heart. That is the point at which life begins to change. And the supernatural takes over in the name of Jesus. So let's all pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I accept the free gift of salvation. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. From this day, I belong to you. I am heaven bound. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed it, the number is coming up on the screen. You can call and text it and someone will respond to your call or your text. 470-377-2963. 470-277-2963. Amen. God bless you for listening to this message. Subscribe to Kodesh Atlanta on Facebook and YouTube or reach out to us by calling or texting the number plus one four seven zero three seven seven two nine six three for more information and upcoming events. Thank you and stay blessed.